Tonight, I bring you five special dogmen encounters that were shared with me. From finding the supposed dogmen den to seeing a deer being torn to shreds in front of you, these are five horrifying encounters with what can only be described as a living werewolf. Close your windows and lock your doors. They're out there and they're coming for you. Grew up on the west coast, got engaged and moved my butt to the east coast for my woman, and we've been living in New York City for quite some time now. She's an avid fan of the outdoors and loves to camp overall. I'm not really a huge outdoor guy myself, but since being with my wife, I've gotten out of my shell a lot more and have grown appreciation for it. One of my wife's favorite places to go check out is Shelter Island. It's actually next to Long Island, and the only way you can really access it is through a ferry. The best thing about the island is the Mashamac Preserve. It's 2,000 plus acres of swamp and forest with some cool little trails to hike around on. The problem is the wife and I have had some not so great experiences there with unknown animals in the area. That's the only really way I can think of what to call it. The first time was when my wife and I were still dating. This would have been back in 2014. This would have been our second or third time hanging out, and we were on one of the trails, and we had an encounter with one of these strange animals. It was in the afternoon, and we were a ways into the hike, and this humongous black wolf jumps out into the path, looks over in our direction, and leaps into the brush. I honestly thought it was a dire wolf just because of the size of this thing. I mean, it was practically the size of a moose. I don't think it's possible for wolves to live here, let alone on the preserve, but I'm not entirely sure. From what I remember, it just looked like a giant black wolf, and I didn't notice much out of place. It did have a bit of a longer snout though, and its eyes were a sharp, sharp yellow. It only glanced over at us for a second in acknowledgement that we were coming up the path. As soon as it happened to me and my girlfriend, we were just like, whoa, did you see that? We were more amazed than anything else, and so we continued our hike. Now, I've talked to her family. They're also all very outdoorsy people, and they said there's no known wolves in the state of New York that they're aware of. They thought it was rather interesting that we had a supposed run-in with a larger-than-life wolf. It was the following summer in 2015 that her uncle, who's also an avid hunter, wanted to join us on a few of our hikes into the Mashamac Preserve. He had come with us at least five or so times since we went there a whole lot, and we had a whole lot of fun seeing the sights and doing all sorts of different hikes and whatnot. At this point, we had kind of all forgotten about the previous year's encounter with the large wolf. This particular time, we had come to a clearing in our hiking, and this clearing not only had marshes, but was kind of swampy, and you could actually see the coastline. My wife's uncle spotted something in the distance, a large black mass moving. It looked like a huge animal. We were hundreds of feet away from whatever it was, but we could tell that it was on all fours, and as black as any animal I could have ever seen. It was quite the unsettling sight. My wife and her uncle are more familiar with the wildlife in the area. I know there's all sorts of animals and there's white-tailed deer, but I can't imagine what animal this is. We were watching it for some time before it started moving in our direction, which we all thought was rather strange. We watched intently, not sure what it was going to do. It was clearly going in our direction, and to the right of this openness was the coastline being just a bit further and to the left of this thing was the forest. All of a sudden, this thing stops coming toward us, and what looks like it stood up on two legs and darted off into the woods to its left. We were all baffled at what it could have been. It was still hundreds of feet away when it stood up. It looked like a dog that just decided to stand and had full mobility. I couldn't really make out details just because of the distance, other than it just being a big dark mass that stood up. Maybe it was the wolf we saw last year. I'm not too sure. It darted into the forest so fast though, we had to double take and ask each other where it went off to. I did some researching later on and found out there's such a thing as the Michigan Dogman, 
but that's pretty far away from here in New York, and so I don't think that's it. I really don't know. Maybe there is some unknown animal roaming the preserve. What do you think? My story takes place back in 1971 in the spring with my cousin and I. My cousin was a full-time mechanic and happened to be great at fixing up cars and flipping them. A guy brought a cherry red 68 Dodge Charger into him with a blown up tranny, told my cousin if he could fix it and find out what's wrong with it, it was his. Cousin eventually ended up getting it fixed and so here my cousin is rolling up to my house in his almost new 68 Charger. I lived in rural Wisconsin at the time, so he would come to see me every so often. Me and my cousin loved cars, so he would drive out to me and we always would go for joy rides in his charger, just around the countryside. Looking back, those were the times. One day though, we were driving around having a nice little joy ride when my cousin decides to pull over on the side of the road. Now, we're in the middle of nowhere, it's a two lane road, no cars anywhere around. There's nothing but fields and pastures all around us. We're entirely alone. My cousin pulls out a black leather bag out of his glove compartment and opens it up. It was full of doobies. He pulls out one and I remember very vividly him putting it to his mouth and then feeling around his pockets and swear because he forgot matches. He asked me to check underneath the passenger seat to see if maybe he had dropped some down there. I remember as I was reaching down under the seat I just happened to look out to my right in one of the fields, and I see this large animal, or what looked to be a large animal, huddled up in the grass. I quickly brushed it off as a black bear, probably, since that's honestly what it looked like from some distance away. I found some matches under the seat that he had dropped and handed them to my cousin, who at this point was more than ecstatic about my find. I looked back over, just out of curiosity, and I see this animal what I thought to be a black bear standing up. It was tall. As my cousin was lighting up his joint, I pointed it out to him and said, that's a huge black bear, and he looked. What's weird is that this black bear looked strange. We were looking at it from behind and it was quite a ways out from us, but it looked more canine from behind, which my cousin and I thought was odd. My cousin was handing me the joint and before I could take a puff from it, this animal we're watching turns around in full and faces us suddenly. As I'm blowing out smoke, I see this thing start to walk toward our vehicle. It was then that my cousin and I began to really panic. As soon as it turned around and started walking in our direction, we couldn't tell it wasn't a black bear at all. It looked like a big black dog standing on its hind legs. It was really hairy and shaggy and it was just jet black. It had a dog head on it and not a bear's. Within just seconds of processing what we were seeing, it was locked in on us, picking up its pace dramatically. It was going to be right at our car in less than 20 seconds at the rate and size of its strides. My cousin swears, throws his joint out the window and floors the car in a drive. We took off so fast we left tread marks and smoke on the road. We never looked back in the rear view mirror, but we were both like, what in the hell was that thing? Neither of us have ever seen anything like it out here, let alone period. We were quite a ways out from where I lived, maybe seven or eight miles away on a more desolate road, but I didn't even know those kinds of animals lived out here. I'm not sure what it was, but it was big and we were freaked out a little that it was going to come and attack the car or even us. My cousin's convinced it was just some huge black bear that got mad we encroached on its territory. Or maybe it even had cubs around that we couldn't see. I don't think it was black bears though, and I don't think black bears even run on two legs, do they? Back in the winter of 2000, I was driving back late from a long road trip from Indiana back to my place in Tucson, Arizona. It was pretty late at night and I still had a long ways to go to get home. I was driving the 191 and was somewhere before Burnside. It's pretty desolate out here and things can get lonely. There's pretty much nothing in either direction but just more desert. Anyway, I was driving back and I think it was sometime closer to midnight. 
There really wasn't any other car on the road at this time, but I ended up seeing lights in the distance. Pretty normal, an oncoming car in the other lane. No biggie. Well, I noticed this car was speeding abnormally. I mean, not just speeding, I mean hauling ass. I know a lot of people like to speed out here, so again, I didn't think too much of it. I noticed that this car was going so fast, the vehicle was beginning to lose control on the road and even began swerving, just trying to stay straight. So my first instinct is, uh oh, drunk driver. But as the vehicle approached, I slowed down and pulled closer to the right side of the road. As soon as the car flew past me, and not even a moment later, I don't know what it was, skinwalker, werewolf, monster, mystery creature, whatever the hell you want to call it. Some large, brown, grayish wolf was running, chasing after this vehicle that had just flown right by me. I mean, this thing was hauling ass too, and if I had to guess, at least 60 miles an hour. It didn't seem humanly possible, and I have never seen an animal move so fast. I couldn't even believe my eyes. I had slowed down to almost a full stop just to intake what I was seeing properly. Both the car and this creature went by me so fast, the details were pretty limited. I knew I saw a wolf face and brown grayish fur. It looked really bulky and it looked like its front arms were much longer and didn't really work on its body. It was strange. I even thought to myself, is there some laboratory around here that this thing escaped from? I didn't see any eye shine or anything, which was weird. After it happened, I picked it up into high gear and I flew down 191 the rest of the way home, just trying to get there as fast as possible. Living in Arizona, I've had quite a few friends over the years, and natives specifically. Some of them Navajo, and I know when I tell them about my encounter, they just tell me it was a skinwalker. I'm just not so sure. I've grown up hearing about skinwalkers being out here, and this just seemed like a roided out wolf running on all fours chasing a car. I guess I'll never know for sure. I love exploring the woods. I always have. Ever since I was a kid, just going out by myself and venturing off and finding all sorts of cool stuff, it's always the best. I found so many great things as a kid. I found bones, I've even found an arrowhead one time as a kid in Oklahoma. I thought that was pretty cool. I remember when I was a teenager, I came across some really cool bones that actually looked human, but it just turned out to be elk bones. However, even though I've had some fun finds here and there, it was nothing really serious. Nothing will ever beat the day I found the den of what I believe to be the Michigan Dogman. It was terrifying, but so exhilarating. This was in winter of 2010. I was working in Danbury, Wisconsin at a plant with a buddy whose dad helped me get the job. Now, what's great about Wisconsin and the surrounding states is all the areas of just beauty and places to hike and go explore. I know people say the great Northwest is beautiful, but they need to come out here, especially around Danbury. Even in the winter time, nature still has its beauty and that needs to be appreciated. Some friends of mine think I'm nuts, but I just love going on my days off and walking miles and miles into the woods just to explore. Today was no different. Out here, you don't have to go very far to find wilderness to explore. This day, I had driven out to the Shawamigan Nicolay National Forest to hike and adventure for the day. I had everything I needed with me, snacks, food, flashlight, emergency kit, all my backpack, extra hoodie, you name it. This was November and things up here are freezing. It wasn't going to be stopping me though. No, we actually didn't even have snow yet where I was so it was perfect. I hiked quite a ways in. I remember I had been going for at least four hours when I ran into more of a clearing of an area. This area had what I noticed to be in it a ravine and at the bottom of the ravine was what looked like the entrance to a cave. It wasn't huge big enough for a person to fit through, but getting down this ravine was a little tough. It was slick, rough, and steep. I had to sit on my butt and slide down a lot of it, but I did it in the name of adventure and exploration, so I did what I had to. I made it to the entrance of the cave in just a few minutes of sliding down on my butt, all across the sharp rocks and dead brush. I was a little banged up, but I was okay. I realized now that the entrance hole was bigger than I thought. 
Holy shit, I thought to myself. I just stumbled upon a bear den. Talk about the ultimate adventure thrill. I decided to quickly pull out my flashlight and investigate. I may love hiking, but I am nowhere near a wildlife expert. I know bears hibernate, and I could potentially run into a sleeping bear. I'm crazy, and that was a risk I was willing to take. Now, I've gone spelunking before, and for those of you who don't know about spelunking, it's also known as caving, and it's one of the funnest experiences you'll ever have. Just so people out there don't think I was entirely retarded for doing this. Luckily, I have a really high quality flashlight with fresh batteries, and this thing was bright. The entrance was kind of sloped. The slope that I just came down on my butt continued into this cave entrance and looked like it opened up more once you slid down a little more ways in. I would say maybe 20 feet at most. I shone my light in and slid down. I reached the bottom in only seconds as it was pretty muddy. As soon as I slid into the cave, the most overwhelming wet dog smell engulfed me. I practically gagged it was so strong. While holding my nose, I shone my light around and it was a decent sized cavern that looked like it continued on for a bit. Now, I started to feel a bit nervous because I didn't think that a bear's den would reek like a dog. As I began to unplug my nostrils and get used to the smell, I started to recognize another smell that was a little bit more faint over the overpowering dog smell. Blood. I knew right then I was in the den of a predator and I should probably leave. I at least wanted to see where this chamber went off to, so I climbed over some of the rocks just so I can get a better look at the tunnel entrance to the next chamber. As soon as I climbed over the pile of rocks, at the bottom of the entrance I just came through, there were bones literally everywhere. I don't think I've seen so many bones in one place in my life. To answer your question, no, I didn't see any human skulls, but there were so many deer skulls and animal bones scattered around this couldn't be good. As I shone my light across all the bones that lay in front of me, I gasped pretty loudly, and I must have gasped loud enough because as soon as that happened, I started hearing rustling noise from the next chamber, which wasn't far away. I immediately started panicking and convinced myself I woke up a hibernating bear and I was in trouble. It just sounded like rustling, but I heard it coming towards the chamber I was in. I turned around and bolted my way down the entrance so fast, I climbed up that slope like someone had a fire underneath my ass, and eventually made it back to the top of the slope. I was filthy, muddy, and banged up, and was certain I had just entered an unwelcome den. Unfortunately, I was still four or so hours away from my car. It was a long and nervous hike back to my vehicle. I was hoping that I did not disturb some animal that was going to find me in the woods and come get me. I'm just not sure it was a bear. I just keep thinking back, why would a bear's den smell like a wet dog? I can't get over that. I've convinced myself it had to be a dog man. It's creepy too, because the cave I found wasn't really easy to get to, and it's miles and miles in the middle of the forest. It was only by chance I happened to stumble by and see it. Although even though it was fall and there was a lot of mud, I didn't recall seeing any footprints of bear or dog anywhere between the top of the slope and the entrance of the cave. Anyway, that's my encounter. Make of it what you will, and I no longer will wander into random caves and won't be as risky next time around. My brother has always been a pretty avid hunter. Me? Not so much. My brother also grew up a lot different than I did. We had the same dad, but after I was born, my dad and my mom split up and I went to go live with my dad in the city, while my older brother lived out in the country with my mom. They had a pretty disastrous divorce, and so I actually didn't get to see my older brother for quite some years. It was terrible, I know. My mom lived out in the country and remarried a man who happened to be one of the best trackers in the area. My older brother was still young at the time, so he learned well. He's in his older 30s now and is a great bow hunter. He's been hunting for most of his life and he has ran across every situation you could possibly come across. Or so we both thought. I actually try and go camping with him more and more now just because he's a wealth of information to be around, especially while you're out in the woods with him. 
He recently opened up to me though about an encounter he had with a creature he can't quite explain. My brother is a pretty stern, atheistic, doesn't believe in nothing kind of guy. If it's not flesh and blood in front of his face, it don't exist. You know what I mean? My brother is not the type of guy to make up stories. He has too much of a reputation to withhold in his small circle of trackers and hunting friends, and has nothing to gain from making silly stuff up. Anyway, this is what he relayed to me. He was out bow hunting some white-tailed deer in October, and he came across a big old buck at about 20 yards away, which is great. He happened to sneak up on it and it somehow didn't hear him. He really had the upper hand, and somehow, this buck hadn't noticed him at all. Right as my brother began to draw his bow, this buck immediately lifted its head up and turned its attention to the left. This is where my brother begins to have a harder time telling the story. He gets pale, nervous, and you can tell he's pretty shaken up recalling details. This scares me because you can tell he's genuinely terrified about what transpired. He goes on to tell me this. Somewhere out in the woods, Somewhere around 40 to 50 yards to my 10 o'clock comes this giant black blur that leaps onto this buck quicker than he could blink his eyes and just starts tearing this buck to pieces. He said it looked like an overly sized canine that was more ripped than a bodybuilder. Just tearing into this buck, ripping it to shreds and gore. He sat there behind a tree just watching for a few moments as this animal literally was reduced to a pile of guts. As the creature was feasting, its back was to my brother. My brother was so scared at this point, he knew it was time to bail and get out of there as fast as possible. But before he could, the thing that was eating this pile of what was ever left immediately stuck its head up in the air and began sniffing before quickly turning around to face my brother. It's like it spotted him and knew he was there. Even though my brother is great at hiding and he was pretty cleverly tucked away out of the open. My brother tells me that he pissed his pants right there on the spot out of sheer terror as this hulking werewolf creature was standing not even 20 yards away from him. Covered in gore and blood of the buck it just mutilated, this thing is staring right at him and begins to slowly and menacingly growl and show its teeth. He said the thing that got him the most was how intelligent this thing was. He said its eyes looked like they had deep intelligence in them. It wasn't just a wild animal he was dealing with. He said the eyes were terrifying in their own right and they were a glowing amber color. But he just said the beast looked evil, like it was right out of a movie. My brother slowly began to back up and this thing just kept looking at him. He eventually backed slowly out of view enough to run back to his truck. He told me the number one thing you should never do in face of any predator is to turn and run because that just invites them to give chase. That's their predatory instinct. He's so glad his hunting common sense didn't fail him in the moment because he's certain he would be dead. I asked him if he thinks it was a werewolf or just an animal and he just tells me it was too evil and intelligent to be either of those things. He just tells me if demons existed that was one in the living flesh. He still goes out hunting and doing whatever it is he does, but he's definitely developed a sleeping disorder from it and has trauma that he's still dealing with from the whole ordeal. I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. If you like my content, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more terrifying dogman encounters like these and other horrible cryptids that lurk in the night. Don't forget to like and comment, and I will see you all in the next video.